Have you looked at the correlation of the omega-3 index with um, inflammatory biomarkers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you expect, we, again, we did this in Framingham. We, we looked at uh, 10 different, very different inflammatory biomarkers uh, that in the plasma in patients in Framingham and correlated it with the omega-3 index and all 10 of them. The higher the omega-3, the lower the marker. So it's, it's across the board. It isn't just, you know, CRP. Uh, there's also some uh, <clears throat> uh, phospholipase A2, um, uh, mm. PLA2, mm -hmm. I mean, PPLA2, that's the one, uh, which is kind of an inflammatory marker as well, very different. It's a very different chemical than CRP. Um, some bone-related inflammatory markers were reduced uh, in association with omega-3. So it's for, there. And, and giving omega-3 does lower inflammatory levels. Right. So I was going to say, that's like, for people, step. like, there, there's the, um, the mechanism by which these inflammatory markers lower, I'm sorry, which uh, omega-3s lower the inflammatory markers, um, and there's a wide variety of them. So you have, e you know, I, I, for a long time, yeah. I always thought of EPA being the, you know, anti-inflammatory omega-3, yeah. which um, isn't entirely accurate because all these metabolites of DHA and EPA Correct. Uh, are... Or anti-inflammatory. Anti yeah. Well, so, it, not, not just anti-inflammatory. They are pro-resolving of inflammation. There we go, yes. Which is the flip side of, you know, you can, you can either prevent an inflammation from starting, which may not be good because inflammation at one level is important. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have the omega-3s on board, the active process of shutting down the inflammation once it starts, that shutdown is inhibited. So the inflammation stays longer. So it, it, Charles Surhan is the guy who's discovered all of these, what he calls some um, specialized pro-resolving mediators, which with all due respect to Charlie, it, it, I think it's a silly name. I mean, there's no molecule in the body that isn't specialized. Come on, water is specialized. <laughs> I mean, so they're pro-resolving mediators. They're molecules made from EPA and DHA that, and some that are made from arachidonic that are also suppressive. Um, lipoxin A this is the one from arachidone. Uh, so th that whole field of, um, it, it, it isn't just that they're anti-inflammatory, they're pro-suppression, pro-suppressing of an inflammation, which is the important piece. Right. Because as you mentioned, you're talking about, you want to be able to activate your immune system when there's a pathogen, you know, right. that's there, but you don't want it to remain active and spiral out of control. Right. And, but, it, but in the context of just, let's say, not a pathogen, let's talk about this low level of just chronic, you know, immune activation, in, this chronic, you know, inflammation yeah. that can be caused from a variety of lifestyle factors. Sure. Um, just obesity. Exactly. Obesity. What, what role do these specialized pro-resolving mediators, the SPMs as they're called, and resolvins and protectins? Protectins and moracins and poxytrochins and... Poxytrins. There's a bunch of them now. Um, it's, it's actually a bewildering array of molecules that have been discovered, made from EPA and DHA, that operate on different cell types and different receptors through different mechanisms. But at the end of the day, they suppress an inflammatory response that's and keep it from getting out of control. So, I, I don't know really the answer how activate how the presence of those uh, resolving mediators plays into the chronic inflammation of someone who's just got a lot of adipose tissue. Mm -hmm. um, I assume it, it will just keep a damper on it, keep it down. Um, again, what we saw in Framingham was all these mediators are, are inversely related to the omega-3 level. Uh, and these people aren't chronically inflamed. Oh, well, well, I mean, they're Framingham people in their 60s, so maybe they are, like typical Americans. Um, so the there's a ton of research to be done. And there's, of course, drug companies are very interested in, in taking some of these molecules that are made from omega-3 and making them drugs that can be right. used. Okay, fine. Good. One of the reasons I'm asking is because, you know, this chronic inflammation is at the root of, you know, many different diseases, cardiovascular disease, you know, dementia, cancer, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the diseases that you were measuring in the Framingham study and yeah. also in, in your, your, your large, you know, 17 
study co mm -hmm. cohort. Um, and so, you know, the question is, is that, so f let's talk about in the context of cardiovascular health, for example. You know, you mentioned the reduced at trial with the high EPA. There was a dramatic lowering of triglycerides. No. No, that wasn't the no. reduced at trial? Redu it didn't lower triglycerides okay. very much. I mean, it was 15%. 15%. Okay, so I guess that's not dramatic. Not but dramatic. that's what a lot of people talk about when they think about cardiovascular health um, and omega-3. And they Think the, about triglyceride lowering. They think about right, triglyceride that's lowering. The, that's the indication that the FDA gave for that. these drugs because the only way to get these nutrients turned into drugs and approved by the FDA as a drug is it's got to affect some risk factor that, if, that the FDA believes in. And, it, and it, when it all began with Lovesa, they said you lower, oh well, look, we can lower triglycerides by 20%. And that was enough to get them an indication for people with triglycerides over 500. That's the limitation. Only Vasipa is indicated for, people, for reducing risk for cardiovascular events, because it's the only one that's been shown to do that. Lovesa has never been tested for lowering cardiovascular mm -hmm. events. It's the EPA plus DHA product, but it's approved for um, triglyceride lowering. Uh, <clears throat> because I mean, that's what we saw back you know, 40 years ago. It does that, but I don't think that's the mechanism by which omega-3s are cardioprotective. What do you think the mechanism? I think it's much more likely to be an anti-inflammatory yeah. mechanism and anti-platelet 